when you zoom in upon documents besides using the call out and I have a YouTube video that goes through some of the other options for you so you can click there and uh, I'm going to actually demonstrate uh, one of those uh, techniques in the session today uh, because it has to do with um, some of the issues regarding um, the uh, workbooks so I want to uh, show that to you also when uh, you're in presentation mode uh, there's a zoom area option instead of a call out type of result and I'll show that to you as well and I have attached a PowerPoint uh, at the bottom of this particular Q&A page uh, that I'm going to show you but the PowerPoint if you kind of cursor down here it is right down here so you can download the PowerPoint I'm going to be showing you about uh, this particular feature a zoom area feature and another uh, aspect of zooming in on objects and things um, and then uh, the question was asked also is is uh, there now an app for other tablets besides iPads and there's a link here to iPro um, and I went there and I copied this information down uh, that there's a, a new toolbar preference provides larger buttons when using trial director with touchscreen surfaces such as the MS Surface Pro or other tablet PCs. Users can also lock the toolbar annotation button. So there's a link here to the Apple uh, connection uh, for a free download for the app uh, for the, um, I, um, the I, um, iPad, but also um, uh, according to um, uh, iPro, they are making available now uh, some apps for other uh, particular uh, pr um, touchpad like the MS Microsoft Surface Pro and other tablets that you might have out there so if you go to the website um, they can give you information about how to download those particular apps for your uh, various types of uh, tablets besides this one for the iPad um, okay so um, what I want to do now is I'm going to go over to uh, session 5 and um, we're going to uh, talk today about the pack and go free uh, feature uh, built into um, trial director um, one of the problems that can come up when you're ready to go to trial is you uh, have to pack up the uh, whole all that work you've done and uh, then put it on a laptop uh, because you've been working off a network or maybe a desktop computer now you're going to pack and uh, pack it up and put it on a, um, a trial director laptop you're taking into court so we're going to deal with the pr process of doing that some of the issues that come up and um, so on so that's one thing we're going to be doing also I wanted to let you know I, I think this link still works uh, there's a, a link here for downloading a trial version of trial director um, now that uh, iPro is coming out with uh, a new product this may I haven't tested it uh, today but it was working the other day where you could download the 9.68 um, 9 version um, so uh, and we're going to talk about working with workbooks um, in PowerPoint uh, there's a, a PowerPoint for that as well and we're going to be talking about presentation scripts that you can create um, when you work with these workbooks I'm going to demonstrate that and there's some how-to text right here uh, that um, goes into that and I'll come back to this in a little bit and how to execute the scripts when you're in presentation mode um, I'll give you some tips on that as well how to interrupt the scripts when you uh, don't want them to run anymore um, and uh, for uh, more on the use of scripts there's a link here that takes you to the uh, quick start um, PDF file that uh, in data um, I pro provided and it goes through those steps and I'm going to get into that with you as well but let's take a look at that zoom issue um, I wanted to um, go into this with you in this uh, slideshow um, well here we go so zooming with uh, what is called the area zoom tool uh, one of you had asked um, a couple actually asked a question about um, instead of the call outs could you do a, um, a zoom in on areas without making it look like a call out and so this is a technique you would use for that um, over here on your in presentation mode um, you would click on um, the um, little icon that has to do with callouts which is right here let me zoom in a little bit on that even 
and show that to you. So this is the icon uh, that um, I clicked on to bring up this um, pop-up menu. And then the uh, option for zooming without having these call-out features where it, you know, it shows the call-out, the zoom, but also shows the document behind it. If you don't want that, you can pick this um, option here, the area zoom tool. And when you pick that, then, uh, for example, here's a photograph that came up. And what I did with it, and I'll demonstrate this in um, Trial Director as well. Um, I took the, my mouse and I held my left mouse button down and uh, encompassed this area here. And once I let go, this um, came up. This was the zoom area of this particular photograph to show you more of the uh, detail there. So unlike a, a call out, this zoom area choice uh, will fill the whole screen with whatever you have selected. Um, you simply hold down that left mouse button, encompass the area which you want to uh, uh, zoom in on and um, let go and it zooms in on it for you. Um, now this is another thing I wanted to talk about. Um, I'm going to show this to you. I had a case uh, not too long ago in which um, um, I got a call from an attorney and said, listen, we have a, a patent infringement case and we have this microscopic um, uh, device that has some uh, patented um, soldering and some other information on it that has been um, kind of hijacked by somebody else that we need, but we can't get a good close-up picture. Uh, even um, when we take a picture with our digital cameras, we can't zoom in. Uh, on that particular um, object, and we need someone that can um, do use a microscope to do this. And I said, sure, I'll, I'll come over, and I, I want to show you the device. That if you have something like this come up, uh, that you can use with very little expense. So let me um, let me demonstrate that. I'm going to minimize this here, and I'm going to come to my camera and bring that up and show this to you. So when you, the question is you're wanting to zoom in on something, but the original picture isn't uh, got enough detail in it. So what you'll, you know, like for example, let's say this is the object that you need to zoom in on. And there's all kinds of little tiny circuits in there and you can take a picture of it. But after you've taken the picture, even with a really good camera getting close up macro mode, you still can't see the detail that you need. You need a microscope. And instead of going out and buying an expensive microscope or something to get in close to all that detail, what you can do is get something um, like this. This is a snap on microscope and you can see where um, you can snap it onto your um, right over your camera. So here's my cell phone. I'm going to bring it in there and snap it right over the, um, the camera lens. And then what I can do is point this down um, on the object and just kind of bring it up here and just get in real close. You can move right on top of the object and um, take a photo or even make a video of what um, what's there. Um, there's a light here too. So turn that on and it gives you a light on your subject when you're zooming in. And so that's what I use for um, one of the objects that we're going to zoom in on here in a little bit. But I wanted to show that to you and um, come back out of here. And up here on um, the um, internet, I, I went out to Amazon uh, to zoom in on um, one of these. Um, uh, the object that I've got here costs $9.11. So instead of you know buying a really expensive microscope to get in close to some tiny detail and you know patented objects, you can get one of these and attach it to your uh, camera and uh, come up with uh, some really good close-up um, pictures. And then you can zoom in on those close-up pictures a lot, um, a lot better. Uh, so um, wanted to give that uh, to you. Now um, I'm going to go into um, Trial Director itself and. Um, I created a new case in Trial Director um, that has, um, I call it the World Fair case. Um, this um, are pictures from the 1904 World's Fair held in St. Louis. And I wanted to show you a couple of things about um, when you bring in um, images or documents into your case, because we're going to talk about pack and go when you're ready to go somewhere with a case from your file server or from a different computer and move it over to another machine. There are some gotchas that can get you if you're not careful. And so I created this new case to um, show you the procedure for putting 
um, documents and videos and transcripts and things like that into your case. I put some um, images in here already um, from um, a folder that I have, but if I wanted to add some um, images to this um, particular case, what I would do first of all is I would use File Explorer uh, to copy the images into the case folder. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up File Explorer. So I, let's say I, you know, I've got a, a case in which I've got either a USB stick or I've got an external hard drive and I want to get this data into uh, my trial director uh, program um, and, and move it in there uh, manually. Um, so what I want to do is um, go out to um, where the files are stored. I put some on my, um, on my desktop here. So I'm going to bring up uh, my desktop. And um, I put them in a, a folder um, for uh, my case, but not they're not in the case folder yet. And so what I want to do is um, uh, go ahead and get some of these pictures. And I'll just pick um, this one, this one, and this one. I'll pick three of them. And now I'm not in Trial Director. I'm in File Explorer. I right button click and I copy these. Now I want to go into the folder that was created by Trial Director for my case. And I know where that is because um, I created it and told it to be in a certain location. So I'm going to go uh, this PC and um, go to my hard drive. And I'm going to come down to users. And I put it in a public folder under in data, Trial Director and cases and, and here's the world's fair case i go there and this is where um the uh this is the folder that was created when i told trial director create a new case uh it, it created world fair case and I put it in this path according to where i wanted it to go and now i've copied those files using file explorer and i want to put them in one of these subfolders um and uh, Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'll do this instead. I'm going to go back to World's Fair case. I want to create another folder inside of this folder that was created by Trial Director. And I just right button click and say new folder. And I'll say uh, new picks. And then I'm going to double click in there and paste those files inside of that uh, folder there. So now I've got these uh, files, but they're not in a trial director doesn't really see them yet. So I come back into trial director and now I go up to documents and I want to import these items from manual selection dialog. Um, and um, I go out to my computer hard drive or to the USB stick, wherever you put them. In this case, I know I, I have them um, um, not on my desktop because that's where they uh, were copied to. But I want to go into that uh, trial director uh, folder. So I'm going to um, go up to this PC. And um, I'm going to come down to my hard drive. And I'm going to go into uh, those user folders, public, and uh, in data, trial director, cases. World's Fair case, and uh, here, here's that new pick folder I created where I pasted them. Go in there, and now I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on each one of these. So I've selected all of them, and I open them, and then um, here's where I can give them names. And um, I want to, instead of micro, I want to call these um, WF new. WF new picks, and I can start their um, number each page um, with a number. Um, I don't really need to do that because they're not multi-page documents. So I can just say with each document, I could just put a zero one in there and then say OK. And so now um, these uh, files have been brought into a folder in my document case library over here, and I can see them. Now, the wrong way of doing what I just did, I want to show you the wrong way of doing it.
let's say I wanted to go back to documents, import new items from manual selection, uh, um, and then instead of going into um, my cases, my World Fair case, new picks folder, um, instead of doing that and, and going through File Explorer and putting them there, I would, you know, I'd go to my um, desktop on my computer and find uh, find them in some folder that's not inside of Trial Director. So I'll look down here as MK picks, and um, I can go into that 15 minute fold. Uh, items and I could pick some files I'll pick that one I already put that one in there come down pick this one and say open and then I could um, name them here and these I'm going to call WF picks not proper we'll call it <laughs> and change this to one click OK and you'll notice now if I uh, take a look at the folder that I have, the pictures are showing up fine. So what's the difference between the way I brought them in here and the way I brought them in here? Well, what has happened is Trial Director has created a link to these files here uh, in that folder um, that is on my desktop. And the problem with that is uh, those folders, those files might get deleted from my desktop. And when I go to pack and go with this case, these files will be missing because they were deleted out of my desktop. Whereas the files that were in um, the, um, I'm sorry, these are the files that would be missing here, the ones that were not properly. But these files, because I use File uh, um, Explorer to copy them into the case folder itself. Uh, even though trial director just created links to them, but uh, because they are actually in the uh, case folder, they are going to go uh, and be pack and go uh, to the uh, next computer. And I'll show you that when we when we get into pack and go here in just a little bit, um, you'll see what what happens because of the the differences of um, how you get the documents into your into your cases. Before I go there, though, I want to. Um, go into trial director again and um, bring up my uh, trial director program and um, sorry about that and let's see where I'm at here I'll tell you what I'm going to do. It's going to come out to my desktop here. Relaunch trial director. And uh, what I want to do is go into um, trial director and show you that zoom method that I uh, talk with you. So we're going to go in there in just a bit and show that to you. As soon as trial director comes up here for me. Let me close out of the presentation tool here and we'll get trial director up here in just a minute okay okay um, so um, trial director um, when you have uh, the um, program ready to go and you're ready to present in court has that zoom tool I was talking to you about and uh, so I'm going to go into a uh, presentation mode here and show you how to use that um, area zoom tool that the PowerPoint um, demonstrated the steps for you to, to use so once you get in your uh, presentation mode um, you're going to pick um, the uh, folder in which your um, the files that you want to zoom in are located. You pick that folder, that workbook, and then you shove it up on the screen uh, so the jury can see it. And now we want to zoom in on this particular um, uh, file. And we, uh, the projection zoom is what is selected right now. But if we want to pick the area zoom, we come over here and select 
this option, Zoom Region. We pick that tool. And now, when we, uh, we get a little uh, magnify um, icon, and we can zoom in on uh, a certain part of the image, like this. And then it, it's not a, like a call out. And we can click this to go back to our full image, and then zoom in on some other area of the image. Like so. So it's um, a little bit better. It doesn't try to show the document behind the zoom. And uh, once you've zoomed in a little ways, you can actually go ahead and zoom in even closer. So you can keep zooming in on a, a section until it can't zoom anymore. And then you can undo the, the zooms stage by stage like that. Um, I like this feature, especially on photographs, uh, but also in some diagrams and documents, because you can zoom in uh, fairly close uh, to the uh, document and that which you're showing um, to the uh, jury and um, give them a chance to uh, see the, the uh, area a little bit more in detail. So I'm going to go back to um, Uh, this screen and I want to go back out on the internet for a moment uh, to show you uh, this particular um, scene here. Uh, one of the problems you run into if you don't zoom in close enough is what they're running into here. Notice they got plenty of screens. They got one over here, one over here, they got this one, they have this one and so lots of people can see these and they probably over here have one before the jury. The problem is the screens are pretty small and so zooming in on that detail uh, can be pretty critical and that area zoom tool uh, can be uh, uh, a very um, game saver uh, when you're uh, in a court with small uh, screens that you're uh, trying to project onto. So it is a critical, it was a good question that was asked last time and I did wanna um, you know, show that to you. Now um, I wanna go to um, uh, pack and go and I've got a couple of those here. So I'm going to bring this one up, a PowerPoint. Um, so uh, pack and go. Oops, I got to turn off my. Uh, I did put a narration on this, so when you download this uh, PowerPoint, uh, you're going to get the narration that I'm giving you right now in the PowerPoint itself. But I, I want to talk. I don't want to talk over that, so I'm going to start it over here. Uh, Pack and Go is designed uh, for this particular purpose. You've got the case ready to go. Everything is ready to go on that laptop. You've worked on it with other people on the network. They've done some changes. You've done some changes. You've done some uh, preliminary work on your exhibits. Um, you've drug everything you want down in your workbooks down from the uh, Case Explorer. And now you're ready to get it on that laptop. You can't use File Explorer to do this. You have to use this pack and go feature uh, to get it on your, uh, to get a workable copy of your case onto the uh, laptop. And so uh, the way you do it is you go into your, uh, your you have your, um, your uh, case up on the screen. You go into file um, to a, a trial director. And you're gonna go ahead and um, click on uh, file and then you pick the pack and go feature here. Uh, the, this is a wizard and, and it goes through creating a portable copy of everything in your, uh, uh, your case, your documents, your transcripts, your video clips, et cetera, et cetera. It's useful if, for example, you need to copy the case, like I said, for a laptop, or it's also useful, by the way, if you wanna make a backup copy of the whole case. You wanna back up the whole case. So the back and go is used for backup as well. And so what I usually do is have a, um, a USB hard drive uh, stuck into my workstation and I do a pack and go off of the network onto that um, particular drive. And that's just in case when you're ready to go to court, the Murphy's Law comes up and the network is down, okay? Or something gets corrupted on the network and you can't get the case and yet you gotta go to trial tomorrow or maybe in a couple hours. So you pack and go the case um, frequently um, 
and get your backups ready to go on that um, on that uh, particular USB external hard drive. And the other reason you want to do that is because uh, you're going to be probably uh, taking a, uh, a duplicate laptop in to court with you. Um, and uh, you um, may, uh, because you don't want that laptop to break down at the worst possible moment either. And uh, then when you bring in your original um, you know, laptop, the one you're going to be using to present, you decide at the last minute, oh, we've got to change a few things here and there in the um, on some of the exhibits. You got to put some more annotations or something like that in them. So you do that on the um, primary laptop, but now the backup laptop doesn't have that uh, those changes. Um, well, then you can use pack and go. You can pack and go the whole case from that laptop to that USB external hard drive. So you've got a, a duplicate on that uh, USB hard drive that you could uh, restore on the backup laptop if you need it. So that's another reason why you would use the pack and go feature. Um, now notice it says a caution and I really emphasize this for you. Uh, this will make a copy of your case only. It is not meant to be used as a synchronization tool. Now what does that mean? Well, let's say on the network um, you've got a number of people that are working on the case and then you pack and go the case to a, a laptop on a uh, that's going to go into court, but you still got a couple of days to go. And then someone thinks, oh, wow, we've got to add these documents to the case. We've got to do some more annotations. Hey, we got some confidential information on some of these documents. We need to uh, redact that information. So they do that in the case that is on your file server. And then you think to yourself, well, um, we've got some changes there, that's fine. But I also made some changes on the laptop case, um, but they're not the same changes that you made. Now you got a problem because you don't have synchronization between the two cases. Um, so you have to really not do that because pack and go is not going to synchronize, it is going to overwrite um, the uh, case that's on the laptop. If you use a pack and go of the case from the uh, server, um, you pack and go it, and then you use the um, restore option in uh, trial director, you're going to um, just overwrite all the changes that you made on the laptop. So avoid using two separate uh, copies of the case on two different computers. Uh, there isn't really the synchronization taking place with the pack and go and you, uh, you cannot really do that. And that's what the warning is here. So you click Next. Um, now, when you're uh, doing the pack and go, you might get this warning that data files are missing. Pack and go was unable to locate one or more files at the locations provided in the case database. Uh, to continue without the files, you click Ignore Missing Files. No, you don't ever want to do that. To locate the missing files, click Reconnect Missing Files. The Reconnect Missing Files wizard will assist you in correcting missing file links. Uh, so we'll go ahead and say Reconnect the Missing Files. Uh, the wizard will aid you in identifying and correcting incorrect file paths in your database. Please press Next. So we click Next and it will come up with uh, uh, this option uh, and you can go to the uh, missing folders, the missing documents, the missing files and you click a detailed report and we'll come up and show you uh, where those files used to be. Notice the problem. Uh, missing folder, users, Carl, pictures, desktop, online, trial director, PowerPoints. Okay, so there were some files that um, had been put into that folder and then I imported them from that folder into Trial Director, and Trial Director created a path to those files. But those files got deleted um, out of that Desktop Online Trial Director's PowerPoint folder because that folder was not a part of the case structure. Remember earlier I went through and showed you how before you import files into Trial Director, you use File Explorer to copy those files and uh, paste them down into the case folder that Trial Director 
uh, created when you originally created the case. And that's why these uh, files are missing because they were located outside of the case folder and then they got deleted from those locations for one reason or another. But even if I would say, go ahead and fix these items, the problem is um, if I would try to correct the paths uh, to those files, those files are not in my case folder in, in any case. So um, I can't really fix the paths um, as the wizard wants me uh, to do. Um, I could try it and go out and select the path to the missing folders, but those files, uh, those files, but they got deleted, so they're not there anymore, and that's why they're missing. Um, so uh, this doesn't doesn't really work. Um, it shows the disk drives and hardware that are connected, and you could try to find them, but uh, you're going to have to cancel the whole process and uh, just um, get out of the pack and go and recopy those missing files uh, to the proper folder and then re-import them from that location. Um, so that that's what you really want to uh, do. Once you do that, then you can create a, a pack uh, a data set to import later. And that's the option that you want to do and choose when you want to pack the files up. Um, where do you want to put the packed, um, this kind of zipped up file? Um, here's where you would choose where the location is. I would pick an external hard drive, a USB drive, making sure you have plenty of room on that external hard drive because you've got videos, you've got transcripts, lots of pictures and maybe audio files. You want to make sure you have a, a, a pretty good external USB hard drive that you're going to browse out to to put those files on. Uh, the pack and go. And once you select it, um, then um, it'll export the data, process the data. It might take a while, could take even a half hour, depending how big the case is and how fast your file server is, where I'm sure you probably will end up having the original case stored. When it's successful, it'll tell you it is, and your data files are located in the following folder, folder, um, and it finished with uh, missing files not reconnected. In this case, I didn't decide to reconnect them, um, uh, which I, I shouldn't have probably done, but just to show you that that's an error message you don't want to see when you get done with pack and go. Okay, so let's go into file director again, and let's say we want to pack and go uh, this uh, particular case. This is the procedure. We go to file, pack and go, and then pick next. Locates all the data, and it didn't come up with an error message like in the PowerPoint because I had copied all the files into the uh, case structure and then imported them from there. And now create a pack a data set to import later, which is what we want to do. Where do you want to put the uh, pack case? You can pick browse and browse out to the external hard drive, pick next, and then go through the uh, pack and go uh, procedure, uh, which I'm not going to follow through on right now, but that's the way that works. Now I want to open a different case. Um, I'm going to open that sample case and show you the pack and go procedure when there are um, missing files and what happens like in that PowerPoint. Because in this particular case, I purposely didn't copy all the files um, into the case structure and then import them. What I did is imported them from uh, folders that were not a part of the case structure. So I went, I'm gonna go file, pack and go, and then pick next. It's locating all the data files, and it says it's unable to locate one or more files. Reconnect the missing files or ignore. You never want to pick this. Reconnect, pick next. It goes out and it gives you uh, what the missing files are so you can see what they are. And then what I would do, um, just you know, to give you the procedure, if you if you come up with this issue, what you want to do is um, go ahead and uh, do a screenshot of what these are, do a detailed report um, so you can see, um, you know, what the files were named. And then um, once you make note of what these are, I can expand this a little bit 
so you can see it a little bit better. Um, you Once you make a note of what files are missing, then what you're going to do is go out and copy those files into the case structure and re-import them into your case uh, so that um, you don't have the, um, the issues uh, that will come up when you're trying to use those files in your presentation. I'm just going to cancel that. But that shows you the uh, problem that can come up when you don't copy the files first into the case structure. Um, the, the folder that was created, folder structure created when you created a new case. And just to go through that procedure once to show you that, you do file, you do create new case, and then where do you want to put the cases? Um, this is the, the path I've been using. Your path probably would be on the uh, network. It'd be like Z or X or something like that. But you'd browse out to where you're supposed to create the case and then pick next. Then you give your case a description. Um, we'll call it sample two. Um, and then uh, go ahead and create next. And you could do all this stuff like we showed you earlier when you create a new case and then go ahead and create it. So now um, the blank case with no documents in it is being created. Um, and I have no documents at all imported. But now before I go ahead and get my documents, go to documents, go to import and manual selection or batch import or capture from this. This is seldom used anymore. But if you're going to do a batch import, I wanted to show this to you. Like say um, you're using summation and you've exported a bunch of files that have coding on them and you want to batch import them using the batch uh, import file provided by summation. You want to copy all that information uh, that um, is given to you by summation into the case folder as well and then import them uh, from that batch import file from there. But the manual selection option um, was going to go out there and let me pick the files from an external hard drive wherever, but then it's just going to create links to those files, not actually bring them into the case structure. So I don't want to actually start that yet. I'd want to go to file, uh, you know, the file explorer program down here. I'd want to go out and uh, find those files that I want to um, actually copy uh, into my case. Going to desktop and find where those files are and not import them directly uh, from my desktop, but go in there and find, a, find the file. I'll just pick one here and then copy it. And then I would go um, into my uh, this PC where I know I have the file stored and go into that case structure and, and paste it in there. <laughs> so I'm going to come down to users, public, and in data, trial director, cases, and here's sample case two. I'll create a new folder inside my case structure. I'll call it images. Go in there and right button click and paste that file in there. <laughs> so, so now the file exists within the structure, case structure of trial director. And when I do the pack and go, it will go along uh, with um, all the other files. I haven't imported it yet. So I go to documents, import new item. Um, and I, I'm going to go ahead and go into that case structure folder uh, that I have. I'm going to go to my PC and um, go into that uh, public uh, folder, go down to um, the C drive, and I go to the, um, the public folder um, under users in data, trial director, cases, sample two, that's the case, and then images. And then there is the file and I'll pick open and then I can call it um, sample. I'm just going to go up here and I'll call it, I'll just call it images and say okay. And so now when I go into documents, there's the file 
it shows up here and it's now a part of the case structure it's actually inside the folder structure of my new case and when I do pack and go it won't be missing uh, it'll be there for me um, so let me go ahead and open up another uh, one of the other cases here world's fair case so I have that one open okay so now um, what I want to go into is another uh, feature with regard to the uh, workbooks and I want to bring up um, that. Oh, the importing the case. I should I should really go into that uh, PowerPoint. It's real quick here before I get off of that. So when you want to import the case from Pack and Go to your uh, laptop, let's say the Pack and Go file that's got everything in it is on the USB hard drive. So I click. I go to import case from the Pack and Go volume. So I went into Trial Director on the um, laptop. I'm pretending here and then welcome to case explorer I'm the case import wizard I click I go out and find that case um, the the case that I'm uh, selecting uh, the imported back case I browse out to the hard drive and find it and then um, go ahead and uh, import it here's the PAK file that I was looking for um, and then pick that um, and then please select where you want the case, the new case location. So here's where you would uh, click where you're wanting to create the new case, where this data is all going to go to. And you'd browse to it if you've got it already created and um, browse into that structure. So that, that would be the way to actually use it to import the uh, pack and go uh, feature uh, for yourself into uh, trial director. Now, what I want to do is um, go into... Um, and another feature um, uh, in Trial Director, and I'm going to go back to our um, um, website here and go to um, this issue here. Um, this is where we want to use um, scripts in our workbook um, to create a uh, presentation script, as they're called. Um, and um, so in, in Trial Director, you have these workbooks that you drug your exhibits down into. And now you'd like to have a script that actually you can launch and it will present each item uh, the way you want it presented. You don't have to pick them in the presentation mode. You just launch the script. Um, and so this little how-to here is showing you um, how to go ahead and um, create a script manually. Uh, but there's also a faster way to do it um, in um, the uh, workbooks, and I'll show that to you in a minute. But um, if you want to open a text file editor, such as Microsoft Notepad, um, you can list the commands uh, in order that you want Trial Director to perform when you execute the script in presentation mode. So, for example, here's a little example here. If you want Trial Director to load the item DX00728-001 into Zone 9, which is the full screen uh, in, a push, in the push zone mode, you would list the file uh, following commands in the script. AZ, which, which is your zoom, um, your, um, your zoom push zone mode uh, command, dash AZ, dash Z9 to put the zoom into uh, the, um, uh, pre, the, uh, that particular um, uh, panel, and then the name of the file that you want put up there. And then um, it gives you some other commands you can use down here uh, that if you wanted uh, a blank line in the script, um, afterwards it will pause. Uh, so you could have a blank line in your script and it wouldn't go on until you use the dash SS command uh, in presentation mode or the space bar to go on to the next um, image in the script uh, or the next video if it happens to be a video. Uh, so for example, if you want to pause, uh, after loading this particular exhibit, uh, before transferring the exhibit into Zone 1 um, and loading the next uh, item, Graphics 01, into Zone 2, you would list the following commands in the script. Uh, AZ, AZ uh, Z9, the file, then Z9, uh, but then XR, which is uh, your uh, pause option. So um, those are some basic issues regarding uh, using the... Um, and there, there are a couple other uh, commands that we, you'd put in there. And it goes on and on to tell you about all the scripting uh, features. Uh, this is a really good how-to um, 
I'm not going to get into all of those, but when you get it done, you save the script. It tells you where to save it uh, into um, into your um, folder structure in your um, in your case. Um, but let's take a look. Let's go back into Trial Director, and let's say we have dragged down <coughs> into uh, our Workbook Explorer uh, some photos which we have here. So let's say we want to uh, make a script that presents all of these uh, photos um, into um, our in presentation mode. So what we can do is we can right button click on this folder and then we can say um, send the workbook contents okay, to a presentation script. So we'll pick this option. Please enter the name of the script and we'll just call it photos. Uh, that's the name of our script. We could have it advanced automatically. If we pick this option, how many seconds do you want that photo to stay on the screen? Or instead of that, um, we can just uh, decide uh, to use the space bar to move forward uh, through the uh, sequence of the photos. And that's what we'll do. So we'll click OK. And so now it's automatically created the script for us, and we can use it in the presentation mode. If you want to edit that script, you go up to Tools, and then Edit Presentation Script File, and it'll bring up all the scripts that I hear it is here, photos.scr. I'll open it. And so here is the, um, uh, the script that's been written. Notice it's just throwing up each file uh, in sequence on the screen. Notice the space here. That means it will not automatically show the next file. I'll hit, hit the space bar. If I didn't want that, if I wanted it to show them automatically, I can take the space out and it will show one file after the other. And then if you wanted to have it show up for so many seconds, um, you can go back to that script um, options, script options and see what you need to type in uh, to have the image pause for so many seconds. But we'll leave we'll leave the script um, like like it is. Um, and I'm going to just get out of the script editor. And now we want to go to uh, the presentation mode, and we want to launch that script. So you type it on the keyboard, photo, photos. Hit enter, and the first image comes up, and it just waits for you to do something. Now, at this point, what we could do is use that zoom tool to zoom in on portions of the um, image like this, and then we could undo it. And then we want to go into the next image. I just hit the space bar, and the script will then bring up the next image for me. And then again, I could use the um, zoom tool here to zoom in on a part of that image and bring it up on the screen. And then get out of there and hit the space bar uh, to go uh, to the next image in the, uh, in the script. And then zoom in again and come out of there and hit the space bar. and so on and it keeps going through when you want to exit the script you hit the um, escape bar and it will come out of the script for you i'm going to go back to um, trial director's interface and um, show you that um, i have a number of other scripts that i have uh, put into um, this particular um, case i'm going to go up to uh, tools again edit a presentation script let's take a look at um, another one here. Um, this one here is just JPEG. Open that. And you'll notice I put in some of the uh, commands for the script. Uh, AZ means uh, the, uh, pu the push zoom. Z1 means put this picture in zone one. Remember that presentation screen can have different zones. And uh, notice the space, so it's not going to go on and show the next image uh, until I hit the space bar. Uh, if I didn't have that space, it would automatically uh, do one after the other. So let's take a look at how that script works. And this is called JPEG, JPG. I'll go back to my um, trial director 
presentation mode, JPG, I type, hit enter, and it brings up that first picture in zone one. When I hit the space bar, it brings up the um, next picture into uh, another zone. And when I hit the space bar again, it will bring up the other picture in the uh, zone up above and keep the other two pictures on the screen. Now, the advantage here, of course, is I can pick the projection zoom tool and zoom in on that particular um, part of the uh, image and undo that. And then I could um, get rid of it and come over and zoom in on another part of that image and um, get rid of that. Or go over here and zoom in on a part of that image. So that's another the script that I uh, created. I'm going to escape key to come out of there, go back to um, the tab key, come back up under uh, my um, edit scripts and um, show you another one. Here's a, um, a, vid, a video script. Let's take a look at that one. And here I have a number of uh, videos that I'm playing and you'll notice I don't have a space in between them but with videos you do have to uh, uh, hit the um, uh, presentation bar uh, to play them. Let me show you how this particular uh, script runs. It's called VID. Go back into presentation mode. I type VID and enter and um, wait for a second for the video file to be loaded. And then I can come down and see the video play. And when I'm done with that video, I can hit the space bar to bring up the next one in the sequence and play it. And then this is actually a video that is like a slideshow, just goes through several pictures one after the other. Hit the space bar again and it will bring up the, the next video uh, in the um, sequence. Uh, so um, if you want to stop a script, you can type in um, the uh, dash ss command and it will skip forward in the script itself and then the escape key brings you out of there so that's another uh, type of script that you can uh, put together if your workbook um, has in it videos which I had over here so here are the videos now if you didn't want all of these things in your um, script um, you can just pick some of them and then um, you can right button click and uh, send workbook contents uh, to, a, uh, uh, to a script. But in this version, I've noticed uh, that particular feature doesn't seem to work uh, selecting. So I'm going to go ahead and take these out of that workbook and just delete those um, out and um, get rid of them out of that uh, that workbook and that way I could um, just go ahead and create the script for the items that are uh, in the workbook itself okay so I'm going to come back now to our uh, web page here so we've covered uh, the pack and go uh, using the scripts executing them um, there's a lot more there are a lot more commands in the scripting if you want to get into that where I find it to be useful is when you do have a sequence of images uh, the carousel will work but it's like a circular thing and I like the scripts because you can terminate them a little bit easier you can also zoom in a little bit better using that uh, zoom tool and so on uh, so